news from the Porsche Taycan here on Autogefühl with Thomas. There's now the Taycan GTS, supposed to be not the fastest, but the sportiest model. And also the Sport Tourism is out there now. The estate form as the sporty, elegant look. Before only the Cross Tourism with crossover cladding. Now there's also the Sport Tourism. And with the GTS here, a racetrack feature for you. The GTS model, all about the dark look. That's why also the background for the headlamps is black. The matrix LED are standard here then also for the GTS model. And simple but clean and sport design in lower part. Interesting how they hit the camera right there. This one here, the chalk gray color. The other one, the carmine red. And another difference we can already see here. This one here is equipped with the optional carbon ceramic brakes, whereas the other one has the standard brakes, then with the red brake calipers but they're already bigger than the usual ones. And turning indicators look like this, really cool with this four dot style in the front. And in the rear like this, not cascading though. A Taycan length is always at four meters 96 or 195 inches. And this one here is not only the new GTS, but also the new Sport Turismo. That means you have this estate form, strong shoulders. And again, you might remember the Cross Turismo had this crossover cladding here, it's also a little bit higher, more like soft off-roadish aspect. And here now without that, just a sporty, elegant look. So yeah, people were actually searching for that version. Now it is here. The GTS also has these badgings here in the side spoilers and also comes with black wheels. Of course, you can then also opt again for other ones. 20 or here optional 21 inch. Charging, by the way, this is one of the specialties of the Porsche Taycan here, this charging flap, 11 kilowatt AC or optional 22 kilowatt AC. Here on the left side or on the other side, or it would be other way around in UK vehicles. You also have the DC charging flap. That one goes up to 270 kilowatt. And that means from five to 80% in ideal conditions with the best charging station, 22 minutes then. The overall range for this 84 kilowatt hour net battery, always comes with the bigger one here, around 400 kilometers or 250 miles. The range has been increased a little bit now here for this model. It will also be updated for all the other Taycan models. And what, what did they do? They did actually increase the efficiency. Why does it, doesn't it close on? Let's see, there we go. <laughs> so they increased the efficiency. There's less friction now in the electric motors and also software wise, some updates and the whole Taycan family will profit from that. Air suspension is standard. Optional also the rear axle steering and this air suspension here in the GTS is set on a stiffer note. Here again as comparison our different color and this one is also the normal sedan form here with the falling roof line. Would like to know from you guys which one do you find more beautiful? For me clearly the typical sedan line more beautiful but then again the estate has such an advantage as for the trunk area soon to come in the interior part. Power and price wise the GTS sits between the 4S and the turbo versions and speaking about the power peak power is 600 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque. The torque figure is actually the same like the turbo models because the rear electric motor is the very same. So all Taycan get the same front electric motor or all wheel drive Taycans, of course. And then the rear electric motor is different with the GTS and the turbo and the turbo S. It's a stronger one than for the rear. And with 3.7 seconds in the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour, the GTS model here is half a second slower than the turbo. Why? That's just software tune. Top speed, by the way, 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles an hour. And what's even more interesting, the brake recuperation goes to a power of maximum of 275 kilowatt. That means when you go top speed and then just brake or use this full recuperation, you can charge the car faster by recuperation than with the charging station. Of course, this is a short term effect then in this case, but really adds to the range overall. In the rear here, light strip goes all the way across the vehicle, black Taycan GTS badge. Also your dark look here everywhere you see also in the lower part. So once again, the GTS about this sinister look and the sedan form here, falling roof line once again with a spoiler, a little bit less drag. 
different with the Sport Turismo. And here the difference with the Sport Turismo, you can see not that falling roof line, a little more upright, but this brings us definitely into these advantages for the trunk. Ta-da! <laughs> of course, easier to load things in and out. 450 liters instead of 400 liters with the sedan. Then here with the Sport Turismo, up to 1,210 liters. You can fold the seats here. The width here is 88 centimeters or 35 inches, not the widest width, definitely. Here, the cabin trolley does fit in also in a vertical way. And the normal trunk length is about a meter or 40 inches. Well, yeah, you want to see the total length, right? So when I fold the seats, like this is actually quite substantial, 190 centimeters, 1 meter 90 or 74 inches. So that's actually quite cool. So definitely plus for the Sport Turismo. And here is comparison for the normal sedan. You have just this small hole right here. However, in both cases, you have here this small space then for the charging cable, for example. This is the car key and Porsche has experience with frunks from their combustion engine models. That's why there's also no problem here for the electric vehicle. And this looks like a 911 indeed. And it's also well usable for smaller luggage pieces and so on. Here, when you're close to vehicle, or when you open it, the door handles adapt accordingly. And the haptic feedback they give is a little bit strange, I have to say. Door closing sound is somewhat just okay. With frameless doors, it's always a problem that the door closing sound is not that good, actually. Sometimes we have rare cases where it is still good. That's especially good, but not here with the Taycan. Dual insulation glass here, however, that it says silent on the interior. Insert of the doors here, first Alcantara insert, red contrast stitches, but you can also get it without red contrast stitches if you like. Microfiber steering wheel, great racy grip, that's how it's supposed to be. And also the seats here in the GTS, all about the Alcantara, the microfiber surface right here. And also with this nice GTS stamp or stitching here in the top part. However, this one is not a completely animal-free interior. Although you have so much Alcantara, unnecessary use of animal skin, for example, at the inside of the doors. However, also for the GTS, like standard for the Turbo S, you can get the completely animal-free interior. In this case, then, you still have a lot of Alcantara, but the inside of the seats have also fabric inserts, a mix of fabric and Alcantara then. Climate-wise, it's even better because the fabric stays a little bit cooler than the microfiber in summertime. So definitely go for the animal-free interior for the GTS model here as well. Getting on the interior, well, it is a sporty, racy seating position. Here we have set the seat all the way back at the moment. Steering wheel like this, you can adjust it up and down. And for long term, it's not the most comfortable vehicle. Definitely not more comfortable than 911. Yes, it is, but you know, with top tall person, you can find a good seating position. A lot of headroom left here with one meter A6 or six foot one. And for this version, there will also be a special panoramic roof available with an electrochromatic function that you can actually have, uh, you know, electronically induced shade in the glass. So now it's open. Then I close it. Whoa, this really looks fancy, right? Really cool. Or when I use these segments here, like scrolling. This looks really amazing, wow. Look at that, so. And then there are these two presets where, you know, it's like, like this, or like this. I mean, not sure how useful this is actually. This is more, to me, like show effect, I think. It, it is such a great show effect, definitely. Um, but I think it's more or less more about open or close. And when you have it closed like this, just 15% of the heat is still coming towards the cabin, so they say that it's even more effective than a classic mechanical shade. So yeah, I think either open or close because, you know, this, why should, yeah. I think it's open or close or just playing around with it, right? <laughs> so in this lower screen, there's then this new button right here, and then you have different possibilities to control. It's really hard to see, but here then you can just swipe up and down and change what's happening on the roof and pick the different segments. Or do it here in the infotainment screen, up and down, choose the different segments. Or here then these presets like close completely or these two dimming presets. And from the outside you can see nothing basically. It always looks like this. 
At the moment we are switching through the modes, but you can't see any difference on the outside. And here, the interior of the GTS, if you do not like red contrast stitches, you can also get these seats here without the red contrast stitches, more in a grey, subtle style. Interior overview clean and sporty, also with more Alcantara right here. This is actually good to make it also a little bit softer here for your knees. And then screens, screens, screens. <laughs> The instruments, yeah, they are a little bit blocked by the steering wheel indeed. And then the main screen and optional passenger screen, which can also, for example, show G-Force meter. And then this, you know, another screen here. But yeah, you control the temperature right here. The Audi e-tron GT, the sister model, has real climate dial. That's better because that's actually too much screen, I think. And then adaptive cup holders here and a very cramped area to put your smartphone. Yes, the analog clock should not be missing, always a nice feature. So the outside parts are a little bit blocked, but that's not such a big problem. Here in the middle part, the speed. On the right side, for example, you can see the driving modes, but you can also have different contents um, in there on all the three different screens. So you can pick it here, for example, also GPS information and so on. Drive information, by the way, as for the trip, when we are on the racetrack, it's about 90 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers for the racetrack consumption, if you're interested in that. PDCC is an option, by the way, that the car stays more upright. And then here in the middle part, you can also, for example, have uh, a map or also here this you know, the map is up. You can also put to the extended map like this. Infotainment system up close, depending on the driving mode. Here, normal, sport, Sport Plus, you can see the parameters change. For example, all the chassis level goes lower. Electric Sport Sound is also then on in the Sport Plus mode. So if it is more accentuated here in the GTS as well. And in the individual mode, you can individualize the whole settings. Then this is here the main menu. It's actually okay to get along. The map is also quite responsive here on the Luca Major circuit on the beautiful island of Majorca today. And CarPlay, this is the integration. And we have the Bose sound system in here, which delivers a typical Bose style, very crystal clear sound like that. Here, by the way, pretty cool. Even at 90% of state of charge, still at over 90 kilowatt. That's pretty cool. And here, when you're at 95%, then it drops down, but still really quick in charging. Seats in the rear also with Alcantara and the middle part here you see it is an EV platform, but they also put battery cells here in this middle tunnel, so to speak. And then for your feet, there are the so-called foot garages that you can still put your feet underneath the seat. That's actually quite good, but you crouch, you know, in the back a little bit. However, it's not too uncomfortable, although it looks like this. And here in the Sport Turismo or the Cross Turismo, the advantage is even if you put your spine up with 1.86 or 6.1, still some headroom left. So this works way better for tall people than the sedan version. Let's take a look at the comparison very soon. Other than that, you also have this rear climate unit, for example, with the touch screen and adaptive cup holders. And comparison here to the sedan in the rear, when I have my spine rather relaxed like this, it's okay. But when I put my spine upright, then I do hit the ceiling with my head. So that's then the different, like this difference here to the Sport Turismo, where you have less headroom here. Thomas's EV Performance Driving Lounge with the Porsche Taycan GTS launch control here. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> Whoa! That was 160 kilometers an hour on this one straight of this racetrack here on Majorca Island. Sport Plus mode, wow, what a performance. And that was even uphill. It was a launch control uphill. And there's the rest of the crew here waiting for me, taking off on that racetrack. And <laughs> they were waiting for me to do that launch control just for you guys. Wow, amazing performance. Of course, the Turbo and the Turbo S has a little bit more speed in the acceleration. This one here at 3.7 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. However, yeah, they, they use the same hardware here. This is really interesting. So in the Taycan GTS, the same electric motors, the same rear electric motors than in the Turbo and the Turbo S. It's indeed just that they tuned it down here in comparison to the Turbo S. But when you drive this one here and then you say something of, oh, it's tuned down, <laughs> you wouldn't really believe it. The thing is, in comparison to the Turbo and the Turbo S here, 
we have the different suspension setup. So the air suspension is set on a stiffer node and that brings us more performance here on the racetrack. So it's easier, for example, when turning in and so. It's really early in the morning at this moment here on the racetrack and that means the racetrack is still a little bit wet because here you can see the moist and yeah, <laughs> in that Sport Plus mode the car is also allowing that. When I'm in the normal driving mode the car does not allow that. But here in the Sport Plus mode the ESC is drawn back and that's why we can also have some slight drifting fun in that respect. But center of gravity is really low all the battery weight in the center in the lower part of the vehicle. Yeah, the, you hear that the race rig is still, you know, not really, not, not that dry and also not that clean. So we have some stones flying all over the place. Yeah, it's really hurtful hearing that on that really expensive, precious vehicle. Starting price in Germany around 130K, but with some more equipment, of course, even more expensive than, but less expensive than the Turbo and the Turbo S and of course the driving performance yeah there's nothing to miss the, uh, there in the GTS if you compare it to the Turbo and the Turbo S and yeah you feel that this little bit stiffer setup here is especially helping us on the racetrack we have all we drive of course one electric motor in the front one in the rear there and two speed gearbox for, um, for the rear electric motor and you maybe also picked it up here from the sound, you know, this electric vehicle, of course, but we have a different electric motor sound. So now let the colleague next to me pass, because we always switch it here on the, on the, on the racetrack. Sometimes, uh, you know, one round, the other journalist behind the instructor, then the next round, I am again. And it's really interesting, by the way, when you're behind an instructor, like behind the professional racing driver, you're always faster yourself. Here now again, this wet corner. Uh, this time, you know, I stayed a little bit more upright because the tires are already a little bit warmer, for example. Accelerating out of the corner. With the all-wheel drive, by the way, you can, on the one hand, be very early on the gas. On the other hand, of course, here, you have a lot of weight with that vehicle, so, the physical limits of the EVs are still there, of course. Um, here, well, you know, almost at 180 kilometers an hour. Now hard on the brakes. You see also the brake light flashing right there. So the, the thing is here with the weight, you do feel it at some point, of course, yes. So the EVs are so much fun on the racetrack and the great performance torque is already there. How can I you know, accelerate out of the corners? It's really amazing. On the other hand here, when we are into the corners, then you do feel the weight, of course. And at some point on the racetrack, weight, of course, plays a major role. And yes, lighter sports cars are better for the racetrack, but that's a racetrack thing. You know, when you're driving these vehicles here on public roads, then the weight does not have such a negative effect. You would feel like, oh, you know, the vehicle is so much less agile or something. So that's the crucial point. I would, would really like to know from you guys, what do you think actually about the electric sound here? It has been, you know, it's just a little bit different, has a little bit different tune here for the GTS model. And you even, when, when there's like this shift from the, you know, one to the second gear there, even that, you know, was, um, you know, was remarkable. Maybe you, you scroll back and listen to that again. Definitely amazing experience. First time for me with the Taycan on the racetrack. It was amazing. So much fun. Yes, weight is there. On the other hand, low center of gravity. So pro and con definitely with EVs on the racetrack. But super impressive, the performance here of the Taycan GTS. And if you want to see more Taycan content, we have the Turbo S review for you. Or also the Cross Turismo. Compare these videos here there.